Hey everybody, Brian with Zen Passion Adventure here. And this is the U.S. Coast Guard 100 ton captain's license exam. This is my study guide that I use to pass the U.S. Coast Guard 100 ton captain's license exams. So this is the fourth exam out of five. And uh, this is an optional exam to get my sailing auxiliary credential and also my towing assistance credentials. So um, these are optional. You can get the 100 ton license without this, but I would highly recommend it just in case some opportunities come up. Um, and so uh, let's go through the exams again that we have already gone through. The rules of the road, I would highly recommend that you master this one first. It's a 150 question exam and you're only allowed to miss four. This is the one that everybody fails if they fail an exam. But uh, so make sure you master this exam first with my study guide video before uh, studying these other ones. Uh, second exam we went through was the navigation general. Go look at that video. I think it's 150 questions. You're allowed to miss 30. And then the, there's the deck general that we went through. I think that's also 150 questions and you're allowed to miss 30. So a little bit more lenient. Usually everybody passes these. And now we're under the towing assistance and sailing auxiliary credential. This is an optional credential. And then the last one was charting, but uh, we haven't gone through that. And um, I have, I don't think I'm going to make a video immediately on this uh, because it's probably, it's more conducive to actually being in a classroom and learning how to do the charting. So I'll probably still put up the video showing the exam questions that I studied, but um, make sure you go in and learn how to do this in a classroom. So, okay, uh, sailing auxiliary and towing assistance. Mm -hmm. Without any further ado, let's get started on this. So, uh, if anybody's interested, I do have these PDFs. Uh, just feel free to contact me. And I have the PDFs of the actual questions without the answers, so you can act like you're taking the exam. And I also have this answer sheet here, so you can uh, act like you're taking the exam and then check yourself on the answers um, of each of these. So let's get into it. This is the assistance towing questions. I think there's 45 questions here today. Um, I think the actual exam is only 30 questions. Uh, and then, so I've, uh, let's get into it. Assistance towing questions. Number one, what does in step refer to in regards to towing? The answer is D, both towed and towing vessels reach a wave crest or trough at the same time. That's in step. Two, the catenary is in a tow line is blank. The answer is B, the downward curvature of the hawser. Question three, the knot used to join two lines or two large hawsers for towing is called a B, carrick bend. You wanna use a carrick bend knot. Four, the biggest problem you generally encounter while towing a single tow astern is, the answer is D, yaw. Question five, you are towing a disabled vessel astern. Your main engine suddenly fall, fails. What is the greatest danger? The answer is C, the tow will overrun your vessel. Six, Using the diagram D25G, if your drift rate is faster than the vessel in distress, you should start making up the tow at which position? Position A, B, C, or D. If your drift rate is faster than the vessel in distress, you should start making up the tow at which position? The answer is A. Okay. Seven, it is not advisable to use nylon for alongside towing because it blank. The answer is A, stretches. Eight, while towing, sudden shock loading during heavy weather can be reduced by A, increasing the towing hawser. Nine, the back down approach should be used with extreme caution because 
C, the tow line could foul in the screws, or AKA propellers. 10, why are astern towing bits placed well forward of the rudder when towing astern? The answer is C, to allow the stern to swing more freely when using the rudder. 11, a metal or plastic eye spliced into a wire is called a D, thimble. 12, a situation has occurred in which your vessel must be towed. When the towing vessel passes the towing line to you, you should blank. The answer is B, secure the line to the forwardmost cleat. 13, when towing a stern, increased catenary serves to, the answer is D, reduces shock stress on the towing hawser. 14, to obtain better steering control when you are towing a tow alongside, your vessel should be positioned with its blank. The answer is C, a stern extending aft of the tow the stern extending aft of the tow when vessels are alongside. 15, when, while towing, bridle legs of unequal lengths may cause blank. The answer is B, the shorter leg to fail. 16, which of the following types of line would best be able to withstand sudden shock loads? The answer is B, nylon. 17, nylon line is better suited than Dacron for blank. The answer is B, towing astern, because it stretches. 18, okay, which of the following is not a good practice when handling nylon line? The answer is C, polypropylene line stoppers should be used for holding nylon housers. So which of the following is not a good practice when handling nylon line? The answer was polypropylene line stoppers should be used for holding nylon hawsers. That's not true. It's not the best practice. 19, your vessel is being towed and you are using a tripping rope. A tripping rope of fiber or wire is used to, the answer is C, retrieves the outboard legs of the bridle where they are connected to the fish plate. 20, which of the following will not reduce hot yawing of a tow? The answer is A, stowing deck loads so the sail area is aft. 21, which of the illustrations below represents a stopper hitch? The answer is C, N. Okay, it's a stopper hitch. 22, when being towed by one boat, the towing bridle should be connected to blank. The answer is A, towing bits with figure eight. 23, when making up a tow connection, you should use blank. Answer is D, screw pin shackles. 24, in a tow made up astern, the fish plate blank. The answer is A, connects the hawser to the bridle. 25, if the situation arose where it became necessary to tow a disabled vessel astern, which statement is true concerning the tow line? The answer is D. There should be a catenary so the line dips into the water. 26. When towing a stern, one way to reduce the yawing of the tow is to D. Trim the, low, trim the tow by the stern. And, uh, 27. Which statement is true when towing a stern? The answer is B. Shortening the hawser generally decreases maneuverability. 28. While towing alongside, the purpose of a backing line is to 
blank. Answer C, slow headway movement and maneuver the toe. 29, on a 45 degree approach, when is the toe line passed to the disabled vessel? Answer is C, just before the towing boat's bow crosses that of the toe. Just before the towing boat's bow crosses that of the toe. 30, yaw is defined as the A, movement about the vertical axis of the vessel. 31, chafing gear is used to prevent Answer C, excessive wear or damage to hawsers and bridles. 32, you are in the process of being towed. As you lengthen the bridle legs, you blank. Answer is B, reduce the yawing of your vessel. 33, which of the following could be used as fair leads on a towed vessel? Shocks, double bits, roller chocks, the answer is D, all of the above. 34, you are approaching a sailboat that is broken down and are preparing to take her in tow. Before positioning your vessel to the pass the tow line, you must blank. The answer is A, compare the rate of drift between the vessels. 35, backup wires on a towed vessel provides blank, a factor of safety, additional strength, a distribution of the towing load, the answer is D, all of the above. 36, the vessel in diagram 25DG has broken down and you are going to take her in tow. The wind is coming from her starboard beam. Both vessels are making the same amount of leeway. Where should you position your vessel when you are when you start running lines? Wind's coming from this way, and um, both vessels are making the same amount of leeway. Where should you position your vessel when you start running? A, B, C, or D? The answer is C. Okay. Thirty-seven. Which of the following is not suitable for use in making up the towing rig for a heavy ocean, long ocean tow? Which of the following is not suitable for using in making up the towing rig for a heavy ocean tow? The answer is B. Ring. Thirty-eight. Selecting a towing approach should be based on which factors? Selecting a towing approach should be based on which factors? The answer is B, weather conditions and the nature of distress. 39, when being towed, a fair lead is a D, a chalk bit, stanchion or block used to change the direction of pull on the hawser. 40, when must a messenger line be used when passing the towing hawser? When must a messenger line be used when passing the towing hawser? The answer is C, in heavy winds and seas. 41, which approach should not be done unless it's absolutely necessary? The answer is B, the back down approach. 42, deck fittings such as bits, cleats, and chocks should be inspected frequently for blank. Cracks and fractures, rusty or pitted surfaces, surfaces that may cause friction and wear. The answer is D, all of the above. 43, when towing alongside, fenders should be placed so as to prevent B, hull damage to either vessel. 44, if a tow sinks in shallow water, you should blank. Answer C, pay out cable until it's on the bottom and buoy the upper end. 
Answer is pay, C, pay out cable until it's on the bottom. And buoy the upper end. Okay, 45. When towing another vessel, the length of the towing line should be blank. The answer is D, such that the vessels will be in step. Okay, so there is the there are the answers for assistant towing. That's the assistant towing questions. Okay. And now let's go on to the sailing exam. These are the questions for sailing. I think there's 30 of them. I think all of them are on the test. So number one, you are sailing before the wind in heavy weather. The failure of what will affect the vessel's safety most? The answer is C, the helm. Number two, both international and inland, unless the rules require otherwise, a sailing vessel must keep out of the way of, the answer is D, a vessel trawling. This goes back to the hierarchy of who has the right of way, so to speak. Number three, which statement is true about sail shape? The answer is B, you should put more belly in a sail in light airs than in a strong breeze. Number four, the sails are properly set and trimmed. As a vessel heads up from a beam reach to close hauled, the blank. Answer is D, jib sheet must be hardened up. Number five, the major lift producing part of the sail is the blank. Answer is A, the leading edge. Number six, you are at the helm of a sailing vessel under sail on the starboard tack, close hauled, and you are instructed to head up. You should blank. The answer is C, turn to starboard, heading up into the wind. Number seven, using the diagram S1, let's see here. A sailing vessel with the wind coming from 135 degrees relative would be, which one of these? A sailing vessel with 135 degrees relative. The answer is B, a broad reach. So the wind is coming from 135, it'd be probably this one. So you're sailing the vessel and the wind is coming from, okay, that's zero, that's 90, that's about 135, and then that's 180 if you're sailing that vessel and the wind's coming from this way. So the sailing vessel with the wind coming from 135 degrees relative would be, answer is B, on a broad reach. Okay, number eight. Which line would not be used in handling a main sail? The answer is C, an uphaul. Number nine, a sloop is a sailing vessel with, the answer is A, one mast. 10, on small sailing vessels, the primary reason for using nylon in a combination chain nylon anchor line is to mm -hmm. blank. The answer is A, provide elasticity. 11, your 40 foot auxiliary sailing vessel has just run aground on a bar. She has a relatively long, deep keel and the tide is falling. You have checked the bilges for damage and found none, which is the most prudent action to take immediately. The answer is C, strike the sails, then run a kedge anchor out to one side, hook the ma main halyard to it, and heave the boat down onto one side. So strike the sails, take the sails down, 
then run a kedge anchor out to one side, hook the main halyard to it, and heave the boat down to one side to bring it off of that bar. Okay, answer C. 12, both international and inland, a sailing vessel shall not impede the safe passage of a large power-driven vessel following a traffic separation lane, a fishing vessel, a vessel not under command? The answer is D, all of the above. You shall not impede the safe passage of any of those. 13. When a sail is reefed, the sail area is A, reduced. 14. Your vessel is sailing on a port tack when a sudden gust of wind heals the vessel sharply to starboard. Which action would reduce? Reduce the healing of the vessel. Attempt to sail the vessel closer to the wind. Ease the sheets to allow airflow to spill off the sail. Shift weight to the port side of the vessel. The answer is D, any of the above. 15, the sails are properly set and trimmed. As a vessel heads up from a beam reach to close hauled, the blank. The answer is B, healing moment increases. 16, you are running before a rough sea and a strong wind. Your sailing vessel is yawing. If the wind should catch the mainsail on the reverse side, you will blank. The answer is C, jibe. It's a very dangerous situation. 17, using diagram S1, a sailing vessel with wind coming from 220 degrees relative would be blank. A sailing vessel coming from 220 degrees relative would be what, which one of these? So 220 degrees, okay, if the wind was coming from this way, it'd be zero, one eighty or zero three sixty. This would be ninety. This would be one eighty. And this is two twenty. So the wind is coming from about two hundred twenty degrees relative. If you're if you're captaining this boat, so this is a broad reach. Sorry for the uh, quality of this, but that's a broad reach, and you should know your points of sail if you're taking this test. So uh, again, using this diagram, a sail, sailing vessel with the wind coming from 220 degrees relative, that's this one, you would be D on a broad reach. 18, what is part of a vessel's standing rigging? What is part of a vessel's standing rigging? Of these, the answer is B, backstay. 19, most recreational sailing craft have triangular sails and are said to be blank. The answer is C, Marconi rigged. Marconi rigged. Okay, 20, when anchoring a small sailing vessel in rough weather, the best anchor line would be composed of C, chain nylon. 21. How should you try to write a capsized small sailing vessel? The answer is C. Lock the centerboard in the down position and stand on the centerboard and pull on a shroud or halyard. Lock the centerboard in the down position, stand on the centerboard and pull on a shroud or halyard. 22. Both international and inland your 18 meter vessel is under sail at night displaying side lights, stern light, and a red light over a green light at the masthead. If you start the auxiliary engine and engage the propeller, you must blank. The answer is D, turn off the red over green, turn on the white masthead light, because you become a power driven vessel at that point. 
23, when experiencing heavy winds, you should reef sails to blank. Answer is B, reduce sail area exposed to the wind. 24, the sails are properly set and trimmed. A, as a vessel heads up from a beam reach to a close hauled, the blank. Answer is C, side slip increases. 25, a deep keel on a sailing vessel increases the blank. Answer is A, resistance to lateral movement. 26, a sailing vessel with the wind coming from 090 degrees relative would be blank. The answer is C, on a beam reach on the starboard tack. 090 relative would be a beam reach on the starboard tack. Wind's coming over the starboard side of the boat. 27, sails may be wing and wing when blank. Answer is D, sailing with the wind aft. 28, a stay is blank. Answer is A, standing rigging. 29, a yawl is a sailing vessel with blank. The answer is B, two masts with the mizzen stepped abaft the rudder post. The mizzen mast is stepped abaft, abaft the rudder post. That means behind. B. 30. Kevlar sails, when not in use, may be damaged if blank. Left in the sunlight, washed with water and bleach, folded frequently on the same fold. The answer is D, all of the above. And that is it for the sailing answers. Those are the sailing answers to all the questions. Feel free to pause the video. And that concludes the sailing auxiliary and towing assistance credential exam for the U.S. Coast Guard 100 ton captain's license study guide that I have. Okay? Again, feel free to contact me if you like the PDFs of this, both with the answers and without the answers, so you can practice taking the test. Have a great day.